Welcome to the Coventry and Warwickshire Green Business Programme podcast. Subscribe now for more episodes. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of our podcast. I'm your host, Maria Kovlia, and today we'll be diving into the world of carbon accounting. For businesses, carbon accounting can be a complex and difficult task, but with the right tools and resources, it can be made easier. In the first part of this episode, we'll speak to a business that has taken advantage of the Carbon Accounting Program offered by Coventry University. Later on, we'll be joined by the team behind the Carbon Accounting Program. They will explain us what the program offers and how businesses can take advantage of the resources available. So whether you're a business owner looking to streamline your carbon accounting or someone interested in sustainability, you won't want to miss this episode. Let's get started. I'm now joined by Lara Longhurst from Hippo Digital. Lara, your company has had some amazing results when it comes to carbon accounting and net zero, and we would love to hear more about your story. But first, let's start with a simple question. What does Hippo Digital do and what is your role within this company? Hi, Maria. Thank you for inviting me today. So I'm currently the Chief Operating Officer at Hippo Digital, responsible for, amongst other things, our carbon reduction plan and our sustainability initiatives. So what does Hippo do? So we're a digital consulting business. We've got around 300 consultants working across different locations in the UK. We work across public and private sector, delivering end-to-end digital transformation programs following an evidence-based human-centered approach. So really thinking about how we keep people at the heart of all the services that we're delivering. Thank you, Lara. While many businesses have achieved their digital transformation, we know that the challenge of this decade will be lowering carbon footprint and starting to work towards a net zero transformation. As you are responsible of this massive task in your company, in 2020, you got in touch with the Carbon Accounting Program offered by Coventry University. Can you please tell me more about your experience with the program? What did you learn? And what were you on your carbon reduction journey when you first got in touch with the team? Yeah, so we're lucky enough to have an office in Coventry, actually on the university campus. So through that, we managed to see that there was a workshop and were asked if we wanted to attend. At that particular point in time, we'd done our carbon footprint baseline, but we realised we had lots of gaps in terms of our knowledge and understanding, um, particularly with all the terminology that you have. And so the workshop seemed like a really good opportunity for us to sort of close some of those gaps. And actually, you know, really simple things like what's the difference between net zero and carbon neutral? What's the difference between scope one, two, three? And some of the legal requirements that we have in reporting. So it just seemed like a really obvious choice for us to go to Coventry and and find out a bit more. So I understand that Carbon Accounting Program offers workshops and one-to-one support. How did this help you in creating and implementing a carbon reduction plan in your business? Yeah, so for us, I think it really helped solidify what we're already doing and gave us more confidence, really, to ensure that we were on the right track. So we'd had sort of an idea, we'd already done some work, but being able to tap into the expert resources like Lorena and Carl meant we could really ask for dedicated support and ask, you know, questions that were really pertinent to our business and to also see, you know, what other initiatives they were aware of um, that we could maybe benefit from, really to sort of help shape our carbon and reduction plan a bit more. So you mentioned that when you first got in touch with the carbon accounting team, you had an idea about your carbon baseline and they help you build that up and understand better where your carbon emissions come from. So can you please walk us through the process of establishing a baseline of carbon emissions and identifying emission sources in your business? Yeah, so we're probably quite lucky because we're a services business. So it makes it a little bit easier for us to identify our sources of emissions because we're probably not as complicated as other businesses out there that maybe work in construction or manufacturing. So when we started our journey back in the late 2021, we were actually um, looking at this area in response to a tender that we were doing for a public sector piece of work. And that required us to have a carbon reduction plan. And we actually had less than two weeks to produce that. So that was a bit of a shock. So what 
happened actually was coincidentally I received a marketing email that week from a startup that had just created a new software platform that helps you calculate your carbon footprint. So at the time that seemed like rather fortuitous. So we got in contact with this particular third party and they worked with us to get all the emissions data that we needed. Most of that came from our accounting system and then we supplemented that information with employee data and energy consumption data. And so we were quite we were able to quite quickly create our baseline basically by using this particular third party tool the other thing I think that's sort of quite interesting is you need to make certain decisions, I think, as you're kind of going through that process. So, for example, with your scope three emissions, there's certain ambiguity around what you might want to call, include in scope or out of scope. So I'm particularly pleased that we chose to include things like commuting and working from home in our scope three emissions because we believe that better represents the impact the business has on the overall environment, but we recognise that other businesses may choose to look at it differently. So I think what's interesting is when other organisations are comparing footprints between businesses, it's really important to look at what is and isn't included. I hope that other businesses who are listening at the moment will learn from your experience. Becoming more sustainable and reducing your carbon footprint, it will become more and more of a requirement rather than a choice. So start now. There's support available out there. And the earlier you start, the better it is. Lara, it would be interesting to know, how did you set targets for carbon reduction and what were some of the challenges you faced in the process? I mean, if I'm honest, I think this is still the hardest part, actually, of the process is trying to think about, you know, how much do you want to reduce your carbon emissions by how much and in what time frame? And realistically, what do you think you can achieve? So we chose 18 and a half percent as our original target. Um, if I'm totally honest, that was probably more of a finger in the air than some very sophisticated scientific method. But it felt like it was a, a decent number that we could try and look for in terms of reductions. It wasn't too small, but maybe it wasn't too large that it felt like it was hopefully more achievable. And we knew that we were going to start with some of the basics in terms of moving all of our offices to green energy, but then starting to think about what else can we do in terms of our supply chain in terms of our waste management and things like that. So those are the sort of the activities that we're now looking at. We've done some of the basics. We're now trying to think what are more of the other things that we can do to help reduce our carbon emissions. In terms of challenges, did you find anything particularly difficult and how did you manage to overcome these problems? I mean, because we work a lot in the public sector, fighting climate change is actually a key part of the government's social value model. So for anyone that's worked in government, they'll be very familiar with the, the social value model. So it wasn't really difficult to get buy-in from our leadership team, for example. So that was that was an easy tick in the process. Plus, our employees are really motivated in this space. For example, they've actually created their own community group, which are called the Green Hippos. And they're also doing a lot of work with our employees as to how they can reduce their personal carbon footprint as well. So obviously we're looking at the business side, but we've got our green hippos who are also looking at how that can sort of be more reaching and sort of think about how that employees in their personal lives can also reduce emissions. So overall, I think we've not really had too many challenges. We've had a lot of buy-in. It's really just sort of the process of getting everything in place and getting it set up. But I think once you're in that situation and you've you know, you've been to the workshop and you understand a bit more about it, then it does, it does make it a lot easier. Thank you, Lara. We know that calculating emissions can be quite a difficult task for businesses. Could you please tell us how did the carbon accounting program help you in calculating your CO2 emissions? Yeah, so, I mean, the workshop really helped us in terms of the sort of questions we needed to think about, how we wanted to approach certain types of emissions and how we would calculate those. In reality, because we were working with a third party platform provider, it, it made it a lot easier for us in terms of actually doing the calculations. I'm quite pleased to say that I wasn't there with a spreadsheet trying to work it out myself. So actually that did make our lives a lot easier in terms of yeah, using a tool that helps support you through that process. And also that also helps you think about what your different types of emissions are and how you include those in your inventory. Can you please share with us any examples of how reducing carbon emissions has benefited your business? 
Yeah, that's a good question. So we've been doing some of the basic things. So like I said, we've moved all of our offices onto green energy. We're doing some subsequent work looking at our waste management and what we can do. We've also tried to think more broadly. So it's made us think a little bit more innovatively about ideas. So one of the things that we did last year is we introduced a salary sacrifice electric car scheme. So it basically means that our employees can use this scheme to purchase an electric car. So really providing ideas to how we can help people like our employees, you know, move away from petrol cars to to green cars as well. So looking at scope free emissions, which we know it's one of the most challenging scopes out of the three, how have you integrated sustainable practices into your supply chain and what benefits have you seen so far? Yeah, so this, I think this is a much harder area to look at. And it's definitely one that we're moving towards spending um, a bit more time and focus on as we as we go forward. So one of the things that we're quite excited about is we've just hired a full-time individual that's going to be focused on driving and delivering our carbon reduction plan, along with other sort of social value commitments that we have in the business. So that's quite a significant milestone for us to actually dedicate a resource to looking at this on a full-time basis. So I'm hoping that by having that person in place, we can really push this side of the agenda forward. Thank you, Lara. We've learned a lot from you today. Thank you for joining us um, on the podcast. This was a very insightful conversation. Before I let you go, could you please answer one more question? What advice would you give to other businesses looking to implement a carbon accounting and reduction program? So personally, I would say we've really benefited from working with a third party platform provider in terms of measuring our carbon footprint. It's definitely reduced the strain on us as a small, small but growing business. Obviously, if people are interested to learn a bit more about that, then they can obviously go look on our website and see a little bit more about the initiatives that we've been running as well, you know, in the past and what we've got planned for the for the future. But like I said, working with a platform provider on that initial step made it much easier for us, I think, to get started on that journey and really to start navigating through the different types of emissions, the different types of things that you need to measure. So that combined with the workshop has really sort of helped reinforce the knowledge that we needed to make that whole thing a little bit more seamless. And with the one-to-ones with Coventry University as well, that's really, really helped. So I think my recommendation would be, yeah, use the tools that are out there at your disposal. Don't maybe make it harder for yourself. It's quite a difficult, challenging topic. So, you yeah, look at where you can get help and resources to support you. And if anyone wants to learn a bit more about what we've been doing in this space, then obviously they can look at the carbon reduction plan on our website. It was great to speak to Lara today and learn so much about her net zero journey. But I'm sure we are all very curious now to learn more about the carbon accounting program offered by Coventry University. So I would like to welcome my next guest onto this episode, Professor Carl Perrin, Director of the Centre for Clean Growth and Future Mobility at Coventry University's Institute for Advanced Manufacturing and Engineering, and Dr. Lorena Cairez Moreira, who is a research fellow uh, at the same institution. So welcome both, and let's start with the first question. Can you please tell me more about your professional background and your experience? Hello, um, I'm Carl Perrin. So I'm an engineer. I've got a background in manufacturing, mainly in aerospace and automotive. I joined Coventry University a few years ago to focus on building industry academic partnerships to get universities working more effectively with businesses to help address skill shortages, as well as commercialization of research to create economic growth. Hello, I'm Lorena Moreira. I'm an engineer with a background in manufacturing technology. I've joined Coventry University in 2019 after completing my PhD to work as a research fellow in digital and sustainable manufacturing. Now, can you please explain me what carbon accounting means and what the program that you offer involves? So carbon accounting is the way in which an organisation calculates how much carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gas it's responsible for in its operations. So it's similar to financial accounting. So instead of measuring financial performance, carbon accounting measures climate impact. And many organisations have never had to consider carbon accounting before. So this programme aims to lay out the basics, explain what's involved and how an organisation can go about measuring its carbon footprint. The principles are the same for all organisations, but the way it will be implemented for each different business that we work with can be really quite different depending upon what they do, where they're located, the complexity of their supply chains and many other factors. 
It can be quite complex. So after we've explained the basics, our experts work with the businesses, go about creating an organizational baseline for greenhouse gas emissions, and then work together to set out a plan for reducing those emissions. So Lorena, for the businesses who are listening at the moment, can you please tell me what will be the benefits of implementing a carbon accounting uh, program and what are the benefits? The top five reasons in your particular order are financial benefits through cost savings, enhancing brand value and reputation, demonstrating social and environmental responsibility, improving business readiness and competitive advantage, and compliance with regulations. To provide some further insights, more recently we've seen higher and more volatile energy costs, which increase the value of energy savings. Reducing waste reduces raw material costs, providing financial benefits. Developing a strategic carbon reduction plan will enhance the brand value and make the business more attractive to customers and investors and also to young talent, as the new generation of workers tend to value sustainability, corporate values and green workplaces. Carbon reporting is also part of corporate social responsibility. In addition to that, it would improve business readiness and competitive advantage by, for instance, being responsive to requests for carbon emissions data from businesses or customers. Last but not least, it helps businesses meet accreditation requirements and becoming compliant to monitor reporting policies and regulations. Thank you, Lorena. It sounds like there are a lot of incentives for businesses to become more environmental friendly. Carl, can you please tell us what are the policies, regulations and upcoming legislation surrounding greenhouse gas? Back in 2016, um, 195 countries, including the UK, signed up to the Paris Agreement. So this set out the need to keep global average temperatures to within two degrees or preferably within one and a half degrees compared to pre-industrial times. And that's so that we can reduce the effects of of, um, temperature change on climate change. To achieve this, we need to reduce emissions by 50% by 2030 and achieve net zero emissions by 2050. So this is why many countries, including the UK, have set a target of net zero greenhouse emissions by 2050. The Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, or BASE, published its net zero strategy in September last year. And this provides a good summary of what net zero means why we need to act and how to go about it. There's already some legislation in place now. So SECR, which is Streamlined Energy and Carbon Reporting, was introduced in 2019. And this means that all large companies have to report annually, but also some companies which are smaller, which meet certain criteria, also have to report. What we've seen through the Green Business Programme is that many of the smaller businesses that we've worked with, especially those which embrace an ESG framework, want to take responsibility for their emissions, regardless of the legislation, and get started on their own journey to decarbonisation. Thank you. We know that businesses want to get started, but we also know that it's a very, very challenging process. In the work that you've been doing with businesses, what are the challenges organizations face in understanding the complex factors associated with carbon accounting and net zero? Well, lots of the organizations that we've worked with have uh, never done any carbon accounting before. So this is very new to them. Whilst the leadership will have heard about net zero, nothing has been mandated before. And so the first challenge is really understanding why the business should invest time and effort and money into carbon reduction and carbon accounting when they could otherwise put their resources to different initiatives, which might deliver much more tangible short-term financial benefits. So often the biggest barrier is just getting started. Once the leadership take the first step and start to understand what's involved with carbon accounting, there's a much bigger willingness to engage. And this is because the benefits become more apparent, whether because having a carbon reduction plan is mandatory to tender for certain contracts, the uh, benefits that it will deliver in terms of reduction in energy and raw material costs, and uh, in turn, a direct operating cost reduction, but as well as that, improvements in staff engagement or the way the business can market itself and create new opportunities. So what we've seen through this Green Business Program, many of the organizations have actually taken the step to create a new post in their business to focus specifically on net zero and carbon accounting because they can see the medium to long-term benefits that this level of focus and attention is going to deliver to overall business performance. Thank you. So Lorena, going back to the carbon accounting program, can you please tell me how this program can help SMEs overcome those challenges and what are the core elements of a structured carbon reduction plan for organizations. At Coventry University, our carbon accounting program focuses on helping SMEs by providing education through running workshops, which cover the essential knowledge 
relevant resources and the key terms to get business leaders started. A toolkit giving practical advice in our five-step methodology and tools to implement carbon accounting, which bring clarity about the process and guidance on where and how to start quantifying carbon emissions and the individual support by providing one-to-one -one support on the carbon accounting process, report development, and guidance on the develop of a strategic and structured carbon reduction plan. It's important to note that a structured carbon reduction plan must firstly have a strong link with the business ambitions towards net zero and represent a pathway to achieving the business goals. Therefore, the core elements are a net zero vision and business goals or objectives, a performance indicator, sometimes called the carbon intensity factor, that is appropriate to the business and that will enable a clear monitoring and tracking of performance over time. A set of carbon reduction initiatives that are smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely, and aligned with the business ambitions, since it may require upfront investments. And finally, a continuous loop for monitoring progress and adjusting and a consistent and transparent report of the carbon emissions, including a carbon offsetting plan for the hard to abate emissions. Thank you. How can organizations calculate their carbon emissions and what are the key terminologies, tools and resources involved? What do they need? For the calculation of greenhouse gases or carbon emissions, organizations must follow the relevant standards and protocols, such as the ISO 14064 and the Greenhouse Gas Protocol Corporate Standard. At Coventry Uni, we've developed a simple five-step methodology based on those standards, which we teach in our carbon accounting program. And the five steps are step one, define your base year for carbon emissions. Step two, setting the organizational and operational boundaries and mapping the business activities which are relevant to the emissions. Step three, collecting the activity data, considering the defined base year period. Step four, identifying the appropriate carbon quantification methods for the business activities, given the specific data collected, then applying conversion or emission factors to calculate the greenhouse gas emissions. Then step five is about organizing the data plotting and reporting, which the data is finally used to support decision-making on the carbon reduction plan which heavily depends on the carbon emissions per activity and per scope, so one, two, and three. Thank you. Carl, going back to you, we know that there are scope one, two, and three emissions. Can you please explain us what is the difference between these scopes and how can organizations establish boundaries across complex supply chains? Of course, there, there's so many different sources contributing to greenhouse gas emissions. So scopes one, two, and three is a way of categorizing the different kinds of carbon emissions an organization creates in its own operations and in its wider supply chain. So the idea of scopes was first produced in the Greenhouse Gas Protocol in 2001. It's been around for a while now and is actually the basis for mandatory reporting of greenhouse gases in the UK. So what are the scopes? Well, scope one covers emissions a company makes directly. So that means on-site energy generation from boilers, any fugitive emissions and emissions from running company-owned vehicles. Scope two are indirect emissions, the ones which result from purchased energy or electricity which might come from a third party. And then scope three is usually the most difficult and often the biggest source of emissions for a lot of organizations. And that, uh, that means all of the emissions that the organization is responsible for up and down its value chain. So it includes purchasing products or materials or services from suppliers, as well as emissions from the products when they're used by customers, and eventually any emissions that are related to disposal of products at the end of life. So really getting to a good understanding of scope three emissions means working with our suppliers and working with our customers to understand what they're contributing. And any holistic approach to reducing scope three emissions means working together on how we might achieve that. Lorena, can you please tell us how can organizations set targets for carbon reduction and officialize their pledge to net zero as part of their business strategy? Setting targets for carbon reduction can be influenced by several factors, which can be external or internal to the business. Examples of external factors that business must consider when setting their targets are policies and regulations existing and upcoming, customer and client demands and requirements, and other factors that may be specific to a business sector. Whereas internal factors to consider are the business net zero vision and their ambitions, the current carbon emissions per scopes one, two, 
or three and or per business activity. All of this information will be given and provided by the Carbon Accounting and Venturing Report. Another important internal factor is the target market and customers and their behaviors. In terms of officializing the pledge to net zero, a simple way to officialize is by publishing a carbon inventory and reports, including the carbon reduction targets and plan. This should demonstrate the commitment and a clear, transparent and rigorous plan to achieving the targets. Other ways to officialize the Net Zero Pledge include joining global, national or local carbon reduction initiatives or Net Zero programs, which businesses are actually highly encouraged to do so in order to fully unleash the benefits of a successful carbon reduction plan. How can a successful reduction in greenhouse emissions benefit organizations? One main benefit for businesses is improved efficiency. The carbon accounting process and implementation of a reduction plan often sets off greater efficiency as business, find ways to improve processes, operations, reduce waste and raw material input, and lower energy consumption, providing them great financial benefits. All the key benefits include a demonstration of social and environmental responsibility, building a sustainability into the branding reputation to attract more customers, investors and talents, improved business readiness and resilience to external and internal changes, which ultimately drives competitive advantage, and finally, regulatory compliance. Thank you. This is very useful information, but it still sounds like a very, very complicated job for the businesses. So, Carl, can you tell us more about the ERDF Green Business Program? How can the program support businesses in this very, very difficult job? Yes, well, the ERDF Green Business Programme was supported by EU funding to help us engage with SMEs in the Coventry and Warwickshire region. So we run workshops to explain what carbon accounting is, and then we followed up with um, multiple one-to-one supports with the businesses over a period of several months as those businesses started their journey toward net zero. What, what it's been really is a low-risk approach for businesses to get started. All they've needed to do is invest time and they get access to our experts in the field who have a lot of experience of already working with similar organizations, many of which are further down the road on their journey to net zero. So we've really been able to share our experiences and help those businesses get started. We've engaged with a lot of organizations at different stages in the net zero journey. The process has been extremely rewarding for the businesses we've worked with. I think it's right to say that they wouldn't have been able to move as fast as they have done without the support from the Green Business Program. But we've also seen benefits for ourselves as well as we've learned and developed our own capabilities abilities through working with those businesses and getting more experience. And the great thing is that we're seeing now big steps being taken towards reducing overall emissions. And, and this is all going to benefit the local economy and support the bigger goals of achieving net zero. So how have SMEs benefited from joining the Carbon Accounting Program? So in a relatively short period, many of the businesses that we've worked with have made a step from little to no activity to a well-structured and embedded approach to carbon reduction. So the kickstart that this program has given them through demystifying some of the terminology and focusing on the facts and creating tailored action plans has helped those organizations understand what they need to do and how they can benefit in the short as well as medium and long term. We've still got a lot to do. Clearly, we've only been able to scratch the surface and work with a few businesses. There's lots more out there that we've not worked with yet. So after this Green Business Programme ends, we plan to continue our work, support more businesses with their decarbonisation plans. We've gained a lot of experience and knowledge, and we're here ready to help now. Thank you. So one final question. When will the Green Business Programme delivered by you will end? And uh, is this open to any businesses from Coventry? Can anyone still apply? Is it too late now? The Green Business Programme, the RDF Green Business Programme funding, I believe, ends in June this year. The journey towards net zero is a long way from complete. So we we plan to continue to work with businesses. There's lots of ways that we can do that beyond um, June this year. What we really need is a sustained approach to organizations embedding carbon reduction as business as usual. So uh, we want to use all the experience we've developed here. We're open for business. We want to work with anyone who wants to, to, to start this journey and we're happy to talk to them now. 
So is it open to any businesses or can anyone apply? Well, we've focused so far on SMEs because yeah. that's the scope of the um, ERDF programme. As we move forward, we'll look, at, look for other sources of funding. We can contract directly with an organisation on a consulting basis. We can look at collaborative research to fund the work that we want to do. But all organisations, we talked about the scopes earlier, one, two and three, we've got to look at the whole supply chains, small businesses as well as large businesses. So we're open to work with all. That's great. Thank you both. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy listening to this episode. Please check the description below to learn more about our program and ways in which we can support your business. Thank you.